Yo, what's up? My name's Petrowski, and a while back, I made a super nerdy video covering some really boring math about the shiny rate in Pokemon and your odds over time. So today, I wanted to do a very similar video talking about Safari Zone. Now, it is actually really important to understand this, or at least know what the solution is. Um, I'm going to be basically telling you guys or showing you guys this like really well written out paper written out by a user by the name of Atricos or Atricos. Um, really really well done paper i'll be linking it in the description below if you want to see it in full detail explaining why the best way to catch a pokemon in the safari zone is simply spamming balls and hoping for the best i'm not going to cover the whole thing because it's pretty in depth and has a lot of complicated math and graphs that are really annoying especially to cover in a quick video i just wanted to be quick um the most important thing to understand from this is the optimal strategy and why is the optimal strategy etc etc um, and I'll get into the TLDRs, but this is something that could save you, you know, a shiny. This is something that could save you a really good Pokemon. I always think to myself, like, I'm really lucky when I found the sh my shiny Shuckle in the Safari Zone, I knew about this strategy. And I, it scares me to think that maybe a year or two earlier, I didn't know about this strategy. If I were to find it then, and I and I would have, like, baited out of a panic, you know, out of panic, I, I might have I might have lost my shiny Shuckle. So, hopefully this, guys, this helps you guys. Hopefully you can have your best chance at catching a shiny with this. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So essentially, um, pretty basic stuff. There's only a couple options. You can either ball, bait, or rock. Mud is the same thing as rock in the center safari zone. Um, and you have to understand which is the best to do each turn. Uh, considering all the factors, each Pokemon has an inherent catch rate, meaning the probability that any safari ball catches the Pokemon. This depends on the species of the Pokemon and its level. Uh, and its speed stat. Yes, it's a speed. So any, every Pokemon has a base catch rate sort of thing you can actually look up a, i use a, a a calculator called i believe it's on the dragonfly cave website i believe um it's essentially a gen 5 catching calculator there are catching probability differences between generations so make sure you're using gen 5 we're not even sure if it's completely accurate to pokemon but it's what i use to give me a general of a, a you know idea so um Essentially, what this is going to explain, and I'll come down to the to the most important part. Here's the simple explanation. This is probably the most important part of it. So, the two effects of the bait and the ball nearly cancel each other out. Having or doubling both a catch rate and a flea rate won't help. So, using a bait or a rock only accomplishes one thing. Waste a turn where a ball could have thrown. And he goes on to try to explain that. So, essentially, what's being explained is that every... At the end of every turn in the Safari Zone, the Pokemon that you're trying to catch has a base chance of running away. So, even if you bait, you're still wasting that turn and essentially, you're essentially giving the, the Safari Pokemon, the Wild Pokemon, a chance to flee for free just to give that chance to stay around, but also making it harder to catch. So, you're basically going for a neutral outcome with Beta Rock, right? Because Rock gives it a higher chance to flee and you're also getting that coin flip at the end of the turn as well as uh making it easier to catch so you're getting like one one benefit but then two negatives right essentially and then bait you're getting all same thing you know you're increasing the chance for it to stay but also making it harder to catch and also uh having that coin flip at the end of the turn so each one of these is essentially one positive two negatives whereas throwing safari ball is just like it's an it's the, your only neutral outcome you throw the safari ball, you have a chance to catch. If it doesn't catch, it has the coin flip to run away. That's it. So it's essentially, there's, there's one outcome on each end. So it's essentially a neutral outcome. Um, and that's pretty much the TLDR. Uh, DV and throwing ball. So it, it's, that's, that's it. That's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, but also extremely complicated. If you want to go into the more complication of it, if you want to look at all this math, I've read through it once before, honestly, years ago. Or yeah, I want to say six months ago. I read through it a while ago. Definitely don't want to read through it again. If you guys want to check it out, it'll be linked in the description below. The TLDR is if you want to have your best chance at catching a Pokemon in the Safari, just spam Safari Balls and hope for the best. That's the TLDR. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video to some extent. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out there save a shiny. If you did enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for future Pokemon content. Check out the playlist links down below. Join the Discord. And if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel, you can do that by checking out the links in the description below to my you know YouTube membership, Twitch, Twitch subs, PayPal, Venmo, etc., etc. Who cares about that spiel? Anyways, hope you guys have a good day. Peace and love from Petrowski.